Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, March 22nd, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. You're looking at Lake Tulare, and it has come back in force, and that is tonight's big story. Death toll rises to five in wild California bomb cyclone. Keep calm. It's boom time. Heavy rain and damaging winds gradually subsided Wednesday as one of the wildest storms of the season made its exit from the Golden State, leaving at least five people dead and others critically injured. As it felled trees, knocked out power, and threatened additional flooding in the Central Valley, which is happening as predicted. In Oakland, a man who has not yet been identified was pronounced dead Tuesday night after a tree fell on him. And even more trees... Take a look at this. San Francisco Bay Area and Central Valley suffered the most damage. San Jose resident Jesus Cruz Diaz, 29, or Jesus, was killed after a tree fell on his vehicle. And another resident, a Walnut resident, Thomas Hustler of 79, was killed when a tree fell on his car in Walnut Creek. So stay away from those trees, folks, as the floodwaters fill the basin. Just west of Cochrane, the water is just 10 feet from the city now. Here is the limits of Lake Cochrane. Or Lake Tulare, sorry. Tulare. There it is. And this is the Tulare Basin if the lake is completely filled. Hundreds of square miles. And this is what it looked like yesterday. Take a look at this. Oh. Let's get a little volume. In Corcoran, well, just south of Corcoran, along Avenue. Uh, as you can see, the... <laughs> I'm uh, out here in Corcoran, well, just south of Corcoran, along Avenue 6. Uh, as you can see, the hood is not decided at all. Uh, in fact, it is getting worse by the second because of all this heavy rain coming down. And now we're ex uh, facing extreme wind, which is kind of scary for a lot of these uh, loosened trees, loosened ground. So I expect a lot of telephone poles down in the area, a lot of trees falling in the area. And just be careful when you're out on these as you can see, there is no way passing through this. Uh, something else I want to show you out here is this house is uh, Long Avenue 6, completely uh, up to the windows. So serious conditions are developing in the Central Valley there. Uh, as Lo Lake Tulare continues to fill, and it's not looking good, it looks, looks like more atmospheric rivers on the way in just about a week. Now the southwest and the plains will see severe weather risk of tornadoes and hail over the next few days. Here's the snow still to come, and this is through tomorrow morning, so there's going to be more snow, Bakersfield and Mammoth Lakes, as well as everywhere west of the Continental Divide. Heavy snow in the southern mountains here. Durango into New Mexico. Heavy snow in northern Utah as well. So the snow continues to fall. As the severe weather and rain forecast is looking pretty deep. Let's take a look at this. This is the rainfall forecast from Thursday to Saturday in the eastern U.S. where you can see a wide swath of 3 to 5 inches from Springfield, St. Louis, Paducah, Indianapolis, and Charleston. So this is a major flooding threat from Thursday through Saturday. So heads up. The full forecast is just ahead. The first impactful spring storm hits Maine. It's insane. It's coming this weekend. A strong storm to move into the plains and east this week. A powerful storm will track across the southwest with additional heavy precipitation and strong winds. This storm will track into the plains and evolve into heavy rainfall and severe weather threat from the Ohio Valley to the mid-Mississippi Valley. We just showed you that map. And this is Thursday into Friday. The next system is forecast to arrive in the Pacific Northwest this week and into the weekend with wind, rain, and snow. Ho, ho. Take a look at how west it is in the wet here. How wet it is in the west here. And we're going to just move this through through Thursday. That is when the next system is going to come up to the Pacific Northwest there and be a humdinger. And definitely uh, a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Take a look at that heavy snow in the Cascades. Thursday through Friday as that severe weather threat starts to develop here Friday through Saturday. Take a look at that heavy snow band right there on Saturday. 
moving through and up into Canada. Now, here's what I want to bring your attention to. On the 28th, another atmospheric river approaches the Pacific Northwest and smashes Northern California with heavy snow. This is another four to six feet of snow coming to that region. And what's more important is that the snow line is going to be even higher. So this is going to be a lot of rain filling Lake Tulare into April. Hello. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals. Here is Thursday through Friday, and there's that quick ripper that moves through the Central Plains on Thursday through Nebraska into northern Iowa. And then that system moves into the Pacific Northwest, bringing heavy snow four to six feet to the Cascades there. And then we'll move east to bring that system to the northeast. Take a look at the snow in the northeast continuing to fall. Those ski resorts are going to stay open through spring, ding, ding, for quite some time. And then that atmospheric river I was telling you about on March 30th, hits the Sierras. Take a look at the snowfall totals just exploding there. And the snow is not stopping anytime soon. These are the models through April 7th. Now patients were screaming and panic ensued as a quake hit northwest Pakistan yesterday. Residents recall a night of complete chaos after a magnitude 6.5 earthquake with epicenter in neighboring Afghanistan hit the region. And there is the location... The quake has come off the 24-hour map at the USGS at this point. It happened about 30 hours ago, but there are at least 15 dead at this point, and our hearts and prayers go out to the people affected. Seismic update, another 6.5 rocker happening today in Argentina as we are on quake watch for the next 48 hours as a major coronal hole is now facing Earth. The ring of fire is lighting up, but nothing significant, and this was a deep blot echo at 210 kilometers. This could mean a larger quake at the surface in this region in the coming days. Bright blue lava spews from Indonesia's Kawayan volcano. Have you ever heard of such a thing? This is one of the most unique volcanoes in all of Indonesia, which has lots of volcanoes. It's the most volcano-rich region in the entire world. Now, stretching over 22 kilometers in East Java, Indonesia, is the Kawaijin Volcano Complex. While this vast stretch of elaborate geologic formation boasts striking views in the daylight, come nightfall, the mountain spews electric blue streams of lava. The only problem, <coughs> the air is toxic. Do you see that vapor above the glowing blue? That is toxic sulfur dioxide. This is believed to be the only location on the planet to consistently exhibit striking blue flames. The Kawaijin volcano beauty comes at a price as the intense levels of sulfur make the air surrounding the complex completely toxic to anyone who breathes it. So you need a respirator. At first glance, the Ijen volcano looks like your bog standard 600 to 900 C stream of red hot bubbling molten rock. So what causes the mountain sunset transformation into something out of sci-fi? Well, the blue lava phenomenon is caused by an abundance of sulfur pockets in the rock. Sulfur is a chemical element that's released as the rock liquefies. And while burning, it releases noxi nox noxious gases like sulfur dioxide, which glows blue. Who knew? Now you do. Let's blow this up. This image is amazing. Look at that. Holy macaroni. Soak it in. The glowing deadly sulfur dioxide is beautiful. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Not much spectacular happening on the front, which is why we just covered that fantastic story on the blue lava flow, which is actually a blue glow flow. But we've got Popo, Shivalush, Ibu. Popo to 19,000, Semaru to 15,000, and Ibu to 6,000. Nothing spectacular. As we head over to Space Weather News, nothing spectacular there except the massive coronal hole. Let's take a look at it. It is now past central disk, which means this hole is now coupled with Earth, and we'll go check out the telemetry in just a moment. But here's the forecast. A moderate G2 geomagnetic storm has been added. 
beginning March 24th due to a large coronal hole now facing Earth. A solar wind stream flowing from this zone is predicted to reach our planet by Friday and could contribute to nice displays of aurora at high latitudes. Current solar wind conditions remain enhanced with a speed above uh, 500 kilometers per second, which means this plasma stream could kick that up to six or even 700 kilometers per second. Well, the good news is that this coronal hole stream has not hit yet, and the plasma stream is now, the plasma speed is now dipping below 500. So that could keep us to low level geomagnetic storm or KP5, but the detailed forecast has us going. Indeed, to KP6, at least for 12 hours, starting on March 24th. So heads up and look up in the night sky early morning on the 24th for those amazing auroras. Now, this is coming from the capture of material from the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency Hayabusa 2 mission, which got some dust from asteroid Ryugu. And now it has returned to Earth and they're studying it. What they found was RNA compounds and vitamin B3 on the asteroid. I can't make this up. This means one of two things. Either all of biology is created by asteroid dust smashing into planets with the building blocks of life. Or these objects were blown off of planets that were already alive. And they have the material on them, which can then re-enter onto dead planets. But this is fantastic because RNA and vitamin B3, as well as other amino acids, have been found on asteroids that have hit Earth. And many people studying it think that it was due to contamination as the rock came through our atmosphere and picked up um, these amino acids. But now... According to this research, these common molecules are now found on asteroids. Isn't that amazing? Now, fortunately, a sample from another asteroid named Bennu will be delivered to Earth in September by NASA's Origin Special Interoperational Resource Identification Security Re Regular Explorer, or OSIRIS-REx. And the discovery of Oracil in the samples from Ryugu lends strength to the current theories regarding the source of nucleobases in early Earth. We don't believe this gobbledygook. According to these people, they think that these amino acids have been floating around the solar system for 5 billion years. And that is just, well, not logical, is it? It's more logical that this was blown off the planet within the last few hundred million years and is now an asteroid. What say you? Here's the paper, Orosil in the Carbonaceous Asteroid 162173 Ryugu. Now, an amazing discovery, ultra ancient art. The brightly colored murals were drawn between AD 550 and 800, which was a very bad time on Earth. This was when, well, the skies went dark, and it is called the Dark Ages. They were found painted on a pillar forming part of a wall. One towards the top of the pillar depicts a man with two faces, one looking left and one looking right, holding a feather fan and a goblet topped by greedily drinking hummingbirds. No one knows who or what the man represents. Still resplendent in vivid red and gold, he could have been a deity through moche depictions of gods typically included where more non-human elements like fangs, wings, and tails are added. And we'll just blow that image up for you so you can get a close look at it. Now, we posted this on our Twitter page. So join us at Diamond the Dave on Twitter. Uh, Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave on Twitter. All the links will be below about everything we talk about. Did you hear today? A shelter in place has been lifted following a chlorine leak from a bio lab. Authorities are working to identify the source of the chlorine leak earlier today in Westlake. This is in Louisiana. The shelter in place was lifted following a chlorine leak from a bio lab. I-10 was reopened after it was closed. It was shut down to traffic and diverted to 210. A visible vapor cloud of toxic chlorine gas could be seen in the area this morning. Air monitors confirmed chlorine in the air. What in the world is going on with our infrastructure? Well, I'll tell you what. The powers that be are corrupt, and they are destroying it on purpose. Now, the Fed today 
raised rates once again as banks are failing and the stock market tanked. The Federal Reserve officials raised interest rates by a quarter point while they noted that bank turmoil could help slow the economy. Well, isn't the Fed trying to fix the economy? <laughs> Probably not. I hope you're prepared. Take a look at this, a great example of proper prior planning. A retired couple spent five years and $180,000 converting a dilapidated semi-trailer into a monster mobile home with a library, spiral staircase, and a hot tub. It's the bomb, diggity, to say the least. This multi-floored, and there you can see the whole process in this amazing <coughs> video on what they did. Now, you might not have $200,000, and you may have a smaller budget. Have you heard of the Bunky Life? We've coupled with the CEO of this company up in Canada, and have bought the Bunkies into the United States just for you. Because a lot of people in the U.S. that are trying to get a bug out plan or buy cheap land and get a little survival hut on it are buying sheds from like Home Depot for twelve dollars and $14,000. Those are toxic, for formaldehyde-laden, toxic waste sheds that are made of glue. They outgas for years. They need to be sealed and painted and coated. The bunky life is much different. The bunkies are made of pure pine. You can assemble them yourself in a weekend with a friend. You need someone slightly knowledgeable in carpentry, but the majority of the construction is just like Lincoln Logs, literally. This is a patented design. It's one of my favorite models. It costs just about 10,000 US dollars. This is the downstairs where you can have a sitting room and a kitchen. Go up to the loft where you can have your bedroom. And it is permit-free. You don't need a permit for many of these in most of the United States. With a, uh, a square footage footprint of just 104 square feet, you just put them up on some stilts here, and you're good to go. There's the, the base price. In fact, there's a sale going on up to $1,250 off on the most popular bunkies through the end of March. So please answer our questionnaire which we will link you below. Get started with your own bunky life. There are dozens of models to choose from. You can even get some tiny summer cabin for just under 6,000 cash. A bunky with no loft. They've got sauna kits, even a bunky bathroom. So we can't implore you enough. If you're looking for, to, if you're thinking about buying a shed, please don't look into the bunky life. And that's all we have to say. We also launched our Ask Diamond Anything Q&A um, website here. It's called 5.me backslash diamond. And you can become a member and get all access to all the questions and answers. A lot of people getting involved. There's over 20, 20 new members, 21 members, 15 conversations have been started. And wow, what a great platform. You can book private chats with me for just 20 bucks. You can book... Uh, Zoom calls for 30 minutes or an hour and my rate is cheaper than anyone on the entire internet because I want this information to get to you and I want to be accessible to the masses and that's a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. You can buy a bunkie and support the work we do. We do get commissioned. You can even become a member of our Q&A community. Just click the button and join. Join for free. We love each and every one of you. Hit that thumbs up and share this video as we are shadow banned from the algorithm because the information we share is dangerous. Nee, 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 nee.